Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this workshop on credit risk scorecard using logistic regression technique. This is our day two of five day workshop. In our yesterday session, we discussed about credit risk scorecard. Some terminologies like what is credit, what is credit, credit score, what is a scorecard. What is the role of a credit officer? <clears throat> and we did a comparison between how lending business was done, how a customer was evaluated, analyzed for loan dispersal, and how things are happening now in 2020. Today in our session, what we will do is we'll take that problem statement ahead and see the application of logistic regression technique in credit risk scorecard. So here is a broad framework. Let us try to understand this framework. Assume yourself to be working in a banking scenario. Assume yourself to be a credit analyst who is in a bank you have access to all the historic loans and loan applications so basically you go to your database and you find data of all the customers who applied for loans in the past now some of those loans would have been approved and they would have got disbursed which means customers request was accepted and finally it reached a stage where you went ahead and gave the loan the amount the other possibility is the loan would not have got approved or it would have got approved but at the end it might have got rejected because customer might have rejected it customer would have said okay i no longer need the money so i'm not taking the loan or you as a bank would not be comfortable in lending that loan to the customer so you have rejected the loan now of the disbursed cases now once you have given the loan from next month onwards the emi will start kicking in you have to start paying the emi now if you don't pay the emi the customer would be called as defaulter if you are paying the emi then the customer would be called non-defaulter so we have these disbursed loan into two categories one is default and no default if i mark default as one and no default as zero in that case we have our target variable as one zero yes or no so the data from past loan applications i am now considering the disbursed loan historical we are talking of all historical loans and these historical loans would have been disbursed by credit officer a b c d a credit officer sitting in mumbai a credit officer sitting in delhi a credit officer sitting in kolkata so data across the enterprise is what we are considering for our scorecard this is where the point is enterprise memory versus individual memory okay so we take all historical data you may take last two years three years five years historical data as an analyst it is up to you for the time being i'm not going into those complexities but what we require is disbursed loan 
and of the disbursed loan the loans which have got in default and the loans which did not go in default if i take all of the data and put data in a proper structure i may have a data something like this here i've got a column which says prospect number and it, this will be prospect number one two three it may it will be actually a loan application form number then we will have dispersal dates asset cost dispersal amount down payment return on in, rate of interest age and many many parameters i've just highlighted a few parameters but what i'm trying to say is when you apply for a loan customer gives certain details customer would give his demographic details like age gender marital status and customer will also say what type of loan he or she is lo looking for and if say it's a property loan what is the value of the asset and if the loan was disbursed when it was disbursed what is the amount that was paid all of that parameter you can just visualize everything regarding that loan is available to you as one row and whether that loan went default or it did not go default that will be available also and that you convert it as a target variable if it is a default i am marking it as one if it is not a default i am marking it as zero so that's a sample data format now what you have to do is on our portal e-learning portal i have already uploaded a file in a workshop there is a file i request you to download the file in the meantime i'll address a couple of chat messages that you people have sent so on the e-learning portal you have to go and download the file uh, some of you have joined late so just because you joined late i'll recap what i was talking the point i was trying to make was as a credit analyst if you have to build a credit risk scorecard the first thing you require is historical loan all the loans that you as a bank have received those loan applications now from those loan applications certain loans would have got dispersed and some of them would have been rejected the rejection can be you as a bank rejected or the rejection can be customer ended up saying hey i'm not looking for loan anymore so i don't want to take it of the loans which were disbursed i'm now focusing only on those data which were disbursed of the loans which got disbursed after a loan is disbursed the customer taking the loan the borrower has to pay emi regular installments and if the customer failed to pay the emi the customer is classified as default and those who regularly pay are no default so you will have all of this information in your data because these are your existing customers right to whom you have lent the loan in past we always build model on historical data where we have already seen the output and here the output is defaulters no defaulters and where you have the output available the machine learning technique is called as supervised machine learning technique okay and now the format of the data would be something is what i was showing the format of the data would be something like this it is a, a table each row indicates a, a loan and the last column is giving you the status target is equal to zero means no defaulters and target equal to one means defaulters the phenomena of your interest when you are trying to build a model what is the phenomena of your interest 
that phenomena of your interest is your target variable. Now, when you're building a risk scorecard, you are trying to predict whether a customer is going to default or not. So here the phenomena of interest is default. Will he default? Okay, so we define default as one, no default as zero. I hope this is understood so far. I hope all of you have been able to download the file. There is a file I mentioned. Kindly download the file. Anyone who has not been able to download it? No, it is not income expense, Parul. Uh, uh, the file name is one minute, I'll show that. The file name is hl underscore a underscore scorecard data dot csv. That's the file name. Uh, you have to see it uh, in uh, workshop two. Paroj, I think so you were part of the workshop one also. That's why you are having that file. See in the workshop two. All of you got the file uh, hl underscore a underscore scorecard data dot csv. No, not able to see one minute one. Minute. Yeah, kindly refresh your resources page and then you should be able to see this file hl underscore a underscore scorecard underscore data dot csv kindly download this file. So a file on home loan application scorecard is uploaded on our website e-learning portal. You can download it from there. Now let us try to understand the concept of logistic regression before we get into Python and coding. The target variable as you can clearly see has got the values 0 and 1. So I have to build a model which will relate the target to various input parameters. For example, loan to value. What is loan to value? Loan to value is a ratio of how much loan amount the bank is giving against the property value. Higher the loan value which a bank gives against the property value, more risk the bank is taking. If the amount of loan bank is giving against the property value is less, more equity is coming from the pocket of the borrower and less money is being funded by the bank. So in that case, the risk of the bank is less. So logically, if I ask you, a loan to value, high loan to value, higher the risk or lower the risk? Higher loan to value, higher the risk, lower the risk. higher which means as my loan to value increases the corresponding probability that a customer taking a loan will default I should give higher risk to that customer logically and this kind of equation is what this kind of variable should come in my model so that I should be able to make that prediction so what happens is we take this target which is our dependent variable we run a regression 
with the independent variables. So the regression format uh, cost of we will handle it uh, for the time being uh, just continue with the flow. I'll do that. So the regression format would be something like this. Z is equal to alpha plus beta 1 x1. What is Z? Z in this case for the time being let's assume I put that variable target here. Z is my say target and equal to alpha plus beta 1 times LTV. If I build a regression something like this what will happen is as LTV increases or decreases my the value of target will go higher or lower but the equation format <coughs> is a linear regression format the equation format being a linear regression the value of t can go anywhere between minus infinity to plus infinity but we want the value to be restricted between 0 and 1 so what we do is this part which is the generalized format of the linear regression the right hand side part which I'm underscoring which is the generic format of linear regression we say that this z is nothing but log of p divided by 1 minus p what is p here p is the probability of event taking place now when i say p is the probability of event taking place what is the event in the discussion that we are happening what we are doing what is the event in the discussion default of loan is the event 1 minus p is the probability of event not happening in this case 1 minus p is the customer will not default now if i say i have an attribute gender does all male defaults i'm gender is another attribute does all male default no similarly if i say female gender does all female default no <laughs> what is the difference is it is quite possible male customer may default more as compared to female or female customer may default more as compared to male so what we know is there is a probability if the customer is male the probability of defaulting is say two percentage if the customer is female the probability of defaulting may be one percentage so what we say is we take a ratio of p which is probability of event happening 1 minus p is called as probability of event not happening that is called as law odds that is called as odds p upon 1 minus p is called odds and we put it in natural log and this is the equation format of logistic regression in a logistic regression instead of directly regressing the target variable with your independent variables you take log of odds and you regress log of odds with the independent variable why we do this we'll first solve this and then probably i'll explain the beauty of this small transformation to linear regression and that small transformation of linear regression gives us a logistic regression 
if we simply take this much part of the equation this which is written here if i take the logarithmic term from the left hand side and move it to the right hand side it becomes exponential p upon 1 minus p is equal to exponential of z if i take the denominator from the bottom to and move it to the right hand side the equation will become p is equal to e to the power z minus p into e to the power z and then i take this part move it to the left hand side the equation becomes p multiply 1 plus e to the power z equal to e to the power z i take the bracket term to the right hand side the equation will become this dividing numerator and denominator by e to the power z we get this equation format this is equation format of a sigmoidal function in this equation <coughs> for any value of z for any value of z the probability will be restricted between 0 and 1 what i would suggest is write down this entire equation on a piece of paper for once once you write it you will understand try to grab a pen paper and write down that or just if you are using a tablet and you have got a pen you put it on your laptop or a device itself in the meantime if anyone has any query let me answer that So what let's take a simple variable gender. I'm just quickly explaining a concept. Insert pivot table. Okay. So if I take a gender and I take target, I take target here. I want view field settings count. So what the data is showing me is female there are 2000 observations male there are 17918 observations so I'll simply write it here female and male the first thing is where is probability in data if I see this data like this, if I see the data something like this, where is probability? Probability is actually hidden in this 0, 01. All customers who are female are not defaulting. All customers who are male are not defaulting. So when I summarize the data at gender level, I see out of the total 2082 female and 17918 male i see 143 out of 2082 are defaulting and 1256 out of this is defaulting so this is this is my probabilities so first thing is probability in data when you see at target column level 1 0 probability is not there either it is 1 or either it is 0 but when you summarize the data there is a probability so basically now what I have to really do is I have to regress gender with respect to this target which target is now converted into probability are you all with me so far 
I converted the data which was simple one zero into probability by summarizing it. Now, if I say gender male female I represent by say zero and male I represent by one, just a nomenclature, then I could have built a a linear regression. Insert a scatter plot. So this. Uh, it is taken the series one. The series one is not required. Yeah. So this is my one wait. Control X, Control V. So this is my data. Insert a scatter plot. Why is it adding a series one? I don't know. Zero and one. It should not be adding but what I'm trying to show is that this too I can build a linear regression but when I create a linear regression that equation will become probability is equal to intercept plus beta times gender this equation does not ensure the probability will be between 0 and 1 only. So what I do is instead of regressing probability, I regress P divided by 1 minus P as equal to intercept plus beta time gender and this is what I represented here log of P upon 1 minus P is equal to Z and when we solve this equation we get the equation something like this P is equal to 1 upon 1 plus exponential of minus Z now what is the beauty of this equation is when I take P here, P and the say, let's say Z. Now, say Z is equal to 0. What would be the value of P? The equation is P is equal to 1 upon 1 plus exponential of minus Z is equal to 1 divided by 1 plus exponential minus of Z. This is the probability value I get. If I make it minus 1, it becomes 0.264. If I say minus 10, it becomes some number like this, which is too small. So what we'll do is we'll create a sequence. Minus 10, minus 9, minus 8, minus 7, minus 6, minus 5, minus 4. Like this. And I'll simply copy paste this. Now you can see if I make this very small, this number goes to zero. I make it hash num has come. Excel is not able to depict the number which is very small it is point many zeros something it is not able to show it completely so it is showing it as hash num on the other hand if i increase this value it does not go beyond one it does not go beyond one and if we take a plot of this, we get this S shaped curve where at the top it is parallel line to 1, at the lower side it is a parallel line, line to 0. The probability does not go beyond 
0 and 1 that's where this simple transformation of a linear regression where we directly do not regress the probability with the independent variables instead we regress the log of odds with the independent variable and we get a generalized format of a linear regression and this generalized transformed format of linear regression is actually called as a logistic regression which helps us restrict the target variable value between 0 and 1. Paroj, Paroj, is your question answered? Okay. So I hope at a very high level, all of you understood this concept of logistic regression. Logistic regression is nothing but a linear regression, which is the generalized format of a linear regression where instead of regressing the probability directly with the independent variable, we regress log of odds. P upon 1 minus P is called odds. This term in the bracket is called odds. And the odds term is very common in matches in cricket match what is the odds of india winning against the competing team so i hope all of you have done this uh, you have typed it once uh, at least on pen paper using pen paper on or, or on your laptop once you are done let me know and then we'll get into jupiter notebook I hope rest all of you have got the files. So I am opening a Jupyter notebook. I'm assuming all of you know how to launch Anaconda Jupyter notebook. Anyone who does not know how to launch Jupyter notebook? Okay, fantastic. May, let me make it full screen. F11. Step one will import the two important packages Pandas and OS. So let me go ahead, import it. Step two, we'll read the file. Here I don't require OS because the file, I have kept the file in the same folder from where I launched Jupyter Notebook. If you see my Jupyter Notebook, IPython Notebook, and this CSV file, they are in the same folder because the CSV file is in the same folder from where I have launched Jupyter Notebook. I can import the file directly. In case you have not done it that way, what you will have to do is you may have to write a command os.chdir and then you have to give the path some path wherever you have kept the file or you will have to type the full path here something like this typically i keep my files in a data file folder in that case i will have to do something like this but for now i have kept it in the same folder from where i launched jupyter notebook so i'm not using chdir and all of this once you have imported kindly confirm syntax i am putting in the chat box also for ease of everyone
so the syntax which i have executed is just now a shape 20000 across 27 head head function is it will show you some initial records so it is showing you some initial records like this eyeballing the data whenever you import data you should eyeball the data okay so that's the reason why i have run the head command just to quickly see some columns i'm not going to make use of all the columns right away we use a few of them for now that's the reason i'm not getting into explanation of each and every column however when you build a model you should always try to get explanation of each and every column for example this column is loan dispersal date this column as the name suggests its asset cost this is dispersal amount how much the bank gave the loan down payment when you are taking a home loan this data is of a home loan when you are taking a home loan some amount of money you have to put it from your pocket so it is the down payment this roi is rate of interest the rate of interest is very high so probably it's in some uh, countries where interest rate is probably very high defaults are very high that's why so age what is the age of the person taking the loan is existing customer whether the customer is already an existing customer and so forth so when you see the data the first thing is you should try to understand the columns having understood that you do not typically take the entire data available with you for model development you typically split the data in training and testing so now we will discuss about training and testing so here i would like to add a point development validation and hold out so the point is when you get data for model development you take 50 percentage of data for development purpose you keep 30 percentage data for validation purpose and you keep 20 percentage data hold out purpose now development validation i can understand i am doing a model development and then i want to test how good is my model so i require a validation sample now what is this third data set called holdout to understand the concept of holdout assume you are bank you are in the bank and you are heading the loans portfolio you are appointing k2 analytics as a consulting company to build risk scorecard for you now one of the approach what you can do is you can share me the entire data available with you for model development the other approach what you can do is of the total data available you will keep some 20 30 percentage of data with yourself <coughs> and you will give remaining say 80 percentage data you have given to k2 analytics 20 percentage you have kept with yourself why are you keeping this 20 percent with yourself the reason is when the consulting firm in this case k2 analytics when they have completed their model development exercise they will come and make a presentation to you 
saying how we went about building the model how good model we build what are the variables that have come in the model what is the efficiency of this model what is the model performance measures everything they will come and nicely do a presentation how will you get the confidence that the consulting firm has done the job correctly how will you get if i ask you the question what will be your answer any idea so basically the consulting company has done the right job by testing on the 20 percentage data which you kept with yourself now you will apply that model on that 20 percentage and because this 20 you did not expose it to the consulting firm if the equation or the model that the consulting firm is giving is holding and the model is performing as what they are claiming in their powerpoint presentation you will get the confidence that they have done a right job so this data is as someone has mentioned rachri has mentioned it is an unseen data it is an unseen data we use the term unseen the consulting firm has not yet seen this data and the model is tested on an unseen data and that is called holdout now quite often the companies which give consulting project they end up sharing the entire data they don't keep this 20 percentage with themselves in that scenario we as consulting companies what we do we keep aside 20 percentage of data ourselves and take the remaining 80 percentage the remaining 80 percentage is split into development validation okay and the 20 percent is kept aside so you build a model you train the model on the development you then test it on the validation and then you do the final final testing on the holdout so this is the concept of train test development validation and holdout sample i hope this concept is amply clear because many people gets confused with the holdout many people understand training testing model has to be trained model has to be tested the training testing concept is not something that has come new that's something that we have learned only with machine learning the training testing concept we have learned it from school days in schools we used to go teacher used to teach us they would train us give us some skills and then one and a half months down the line we get the first unit test four months down the line we get the second first semester seven months down the line we get second unit test and final semester for a full one academic year as a student we were tested four times so the training testing concept is the same thing you train the model you test the model how good is the model applying okay any doubts here these are all conceptual elements were very essential before we are getting into regression core uh, the running of the regression equation holdout concept everyone has understood okay if you have understood the holdout in this scenario i have given the entire code entire data i have not retained any data behind so we as a consultant we will split it into 50 30 20 so the code for that i am putting on the chat box
So here the entire 20,000 is split into 10,000 that is 50 percentage, 6,000 that is 30 percentage, 4,000 that is 20 percentage. This 4,000 is my holdout. The first two are my development validation. So I quickly have done the data split training testing development validation holdout whenever you do training testing whenever you are splitting the data the sampling that happens is random sampling in this case the default we do random sampling of data all of these are statistical concept there are four different ways of doing sampling simple random sampling then we have got stratified sampling then we have got cluster sampling and then we have got sampling with replacement in a simple random sampling we do simple random sampling without replacement simple random sampling with replacement stratified random sampling without replacement stratified random sampling with replacement and then we have got a co top uh, concept called cluster sampling so there are various sampling methods typically what is used is simple random sampling without replacement okay so that is the default which is going to get applied here and based on that my data has got split whenever you do sampling there is always a sampling error associated these are all statistical concept how do i ensure my data does not have very high amount of sampling error so whenever you do sampling you should see the most important parameter of your sample with respect to population so in my scenario what is the target rate when i use the term target rate so here the term should not be response rate here the term should be default rate because we are now building a model for default a response comes when you are building a model for marketing so what is your target rate what is the definition of target rate anyone can you guess what do you mean by target rate any guesses Vatsalya, would you like to take a guess what i mean by target rate Shankar, would you like to take a guess? Percentage of defaulters. Yes, Vatsalya. So Vatsalya has sent a message. In this scenario, the target rate is percentage of defaulters. So the definition of target rate is very simple for all of you. The target, the phenomena of interest is our target phenomena. Now in the total data, how many occurrence of that phenomena has happened? If I simply take a sum of this, It says there are 1,399 records where target is equal to 1 and total number of records are 20,000. So the target rate is nothing but 1,399 divided by 20,000. So this is my target rate. And what does 1 represent here? The 1 in this data represents defaulters. So in this case, my target rate is nothing but default rate okay so that's the concept 
So let me delete all of this and let me close this file. Okay. So when I run this piece of code, I see my overall default rate is 7%. The sample which I created, the default is 6.89. Thus, another sample has got 7.12 and a third sample has got 7.08. Now, because my defaults are in development, validation and holdout, all of these numbers are very close to the population default rate. I can assume there is not much error. There is not much bias in my data because development sample default is very much close to population default. Validation sample default is very much close to population default and holdout is also very close to this. It is very essential whenever you do sampling, the most important variable, you should check the statistics of that variable with respect to the population because if that statistics does not match with the population, you will go ahead and take this data and build the model. And you will take probably two weeks to build the model. And after two weeks, you will realize my development sample was not a representative sample of the population. As such, all your effort has been wasted. I hope this concept, whenever you do sampling, you should do a QC of the sample with respect to the population in model development exercise. This point is amply clear to everyone. Ankit, uh, the beauty of random sampling is the random sample is to a large extent always representative of the population. The reason why you have to do this cross check is the sampling theory says that there is a very small probability of the random sample not being a representative of the population. And the Murphy's law can play with you any time and that sm very small probability may be that thing happens on your most important project you will never know that so as a as a precaution it's very much recommended you should quickly do a cross check on couple of important parameters and when the parameters are very much close to each other you can be assured your random sample is rep representative of the population. In sample data, if the T rate is very low, yes, Shankar. If, if the target rate, assume this would have come 5 point something, holdout would have come 5 point something and my actual population is 7. I will have to rerun it. In that case, I'll change this number. This is some random number initializer. If you see this variable, a random state, it's a random number initializer. I'll change the seed. And by changing the seed, I will rerun the sampling. So what we have understood is, in today's session is, how to how to go about splitting the data into training testing and before I conclude the session we will also quickly run this line of code and this I'll explain in the upcoming session so in this particular step we are building the model 
So I'll just quickly run this one line syntax. So this part of the syntax is building a single variable logistic regression model. How to interpret this single variable logistic regression? We'll see in tomorrow's session and tomorrow's session we will also do outlier treatment and missing value imputation. Those concepts are what we are going to cover. So till now what we have understood is when we start off with a model development, we have a data. We have to split the data into development validation holdout. Holdout is an unseen data. Development validation is used for the model development purpose. And I've just executed a code to build a single variable logistic regression. We also understood the entire mathematics part of logistic regression, which I explained here with the sigmoidal curve, the plot we have seen. So the equation derivation has been understood. In tomorrow's session, we'll apply this equation to compute the probability and then move to missing value treatment outlier detection. With that, we conclude today's part of the workshop. Any questions, those who have questions can stay back. Those who do not have questions can drop off from the workshop. So basically, uh, Ankit, uh, one more question. What is acceptable tolerance within one percentage of default? Uh, no, uh, Ankit, uh, what is acceptable tolerance within one percentage of default rate? No, it's uh, see if that say the target rate itself is uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.05 percentage or 0 0.50 percentage, less than one. In that case, this statement will not hold, right? Here we are going with a broad judgment. However, there are statistical test hypothesis testing to say whether the proportion of target rate between uh, the two samples is equal or not. But when the broadly at a very high level, if you see the numbers very close to each other, you need not go into those statistical tests. Otherwise, you I cannot make a generic statement within one percentage of population default rate. It's an acceptable tolerance. Right. Uh, what's all yeah, cross validation? Uh, cross validation concept. There's a two ways of model development. One is a validation, and what is a, uh, the other is a cross validation. So cross validation we use in machine uh, advanced machine learning techniques. Typically, logistic we always build with a validation approach. Any other questions? Thank you, Ojasvi. If there are no further questions, feel free to drop. Okay, since there are no further questions, I am also dropping off from the session. I am exiting. Thank you all. See you tomorrow, same time at 9 p.m. Bye-bye.